Today's the day we've all been waiting for. The DJI Ronin S review and the NSX is here too. These two actually have a lot in common. Their designs are thoroughly thought out, taking months, if not years. They both have high torque motors. Most of us will be using mirrorless or DSLRs, but you could throw on C200s, FS5s, and even a Red Scarlet. They both have good grips. I haven't seen a lot of gimbals with rubber textured grips like this one. They also have it on their mini tripod. Granted, this is a focus wheel and that's a steering wheel, they both get you in the same direction. They also both have a sport mode. When the sport mode is engaged on the Ronin S, you could do really fast whip pans. And when the sport mode is engaged on the NSX, you get really good whiplash. <laughs> they both can handle 75 mile per hour winds, but the NSX could handle a little bit more than that, only like 191. Now that we're back inside, we could dive deeper into the features of the DJI Ronin S and how it stands out from different gimbals. First and foremost, it has a lower set motor here, which allows you to see the back of your screen. Now you're welcome to use other monitors to see better. However, shooting these shots in the interior of the car, I even had to take out the mini tripod because there was only so much space. I like to keep my gimbal set up light because it's easy to maneuver. I've seen a few gimbal setups with this lower set motor. However, in the future, I would really like it if all of them carried this design. It also allows you to put heavier setups on it, which is what this gimbal does best. With front heavy camera setups, you could actually push the camera a lot further back, making it easier to balance because it gives you that space and clearance. Here's the gimbal holding a 70 to 200 millimeter, for example. Crazy, I know, but it works. Here I have the G Master 24 to 70 on it. It was really easy to balance, had no issues, not hitting the back motor, which happens to a few other gimbals, so this was perfect for it. These custom profiles on the back are genius and something I haven't seen in other gimbals. You could set them up with the Ronin app. I have my user one set to a really smooth pan, which is great for orbitals. And then for user three, I have the infamous 360 roll you gotta have it, you just gotta, it's so much fun. And finally, you don't have to go into the app every time you wanna change motor settings. For instance, like I said earlier, if you hold down the M button, you get really fast whip pans, which is great for transitions or following a really fast subject. I have this set on a tripod right now just so you could see it because I don't have a table in here, but I will show you the modes real quick. So to change to the modes, you push this trigger button here the basic mode allows you to pan and tilt, but if you hold this trigger down, you can lock it, which is my favorite mode, because then you can get really cool jib shots and keep it level that way. If you push it three times, it activates selfie mode. Dun, 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 vlog life, here you are. I love how easy the double tap feature is to recenter the gimbal. Sometimes while you're out shooting, your horizon will get a little wonky. You could change it with the joystick, but it's so much faster to just double tap and to reset. Without a doubt, this is the easiest gimbal to get into inverted mode. With other gimbals, you need a little bit of wrist practice to get it right, but all you gotta do is swing it clockwise to get it down. And now you can get those epic low angle shots. And then to bring it back up, just swing it counterclockwise. Just keep the motor on the outside when you switch in it. Let me set it back down so we could talk about the build real quick. The build is quality on this and the ergonomics are really nice. It's really comfy to hold this handle and the buttons are placed perfectly where your fingers would need to be. 
The mini tripod has the same feels as this handle. Not only is it a stand for your gimbal for balancing and setting it down, but also duplicates to extend the handle, which makes it more comfortable to shoot for longer periods of time. And yes, there will be dual handles coming out for those of you who like to rock your gimbals that way. The Ronin S has a built-in 12-hour battery life that charges via USB-C, and total charge only takes two to two and a half hours. You also have this handy battery indicator on the handle. The joystick back here is really nice and grippy. It reminds me of the Mavic Air joysticks, actually, and depending on how hard you maneuver it, it'll change the speed. With other gimbals, there's only one speed on the joysticks, and it's usually too fast. So you go from slow to quick, to slow to quick. So if you're a Panasonic GH5 user, you are gonna have full benefits of all the features, you lucky duck you, like focus pulling, time lapse, start and stop record. The Sony fam is left out on this one. They provide this infrared cable, but it's kind of awkward and unreliable. I tested the time lapse on the start and stop at home and it was working okay. And then when I was testing it on the field, it wasn't having any of it. In general, it's been a real struggle for Sony and gimbal companies to work together. Hopefully in the future, the Sony cable will at least do stop start, maybe charge the battery and hopefully do focusing. Although I don't really see that happening in any time in the near future, but maybe I'm wrong. I do know that they will have a mechanical focus wheel for your lenses though, but not through your cables, unfortunately. GH5 users take advantage. <laughs> I might have to get one. Shoot. I'm gonna put a link to the full camera capabilities down below. I love that this gimbal comes with a quick plate because it makes it easier to balance and easier to switch from gimbal to tripod on set. However, even though it looks like a standard Manfrotto quick plate, it only works with certain tripod heads like the 500 AH because you could just plop it down. But with a B free or any type of Manfrotto tripod where you have to slip it in to lock it down, it doesn't work correctly. Also, if you use a standard Manfrotto tripod to put on the gimbal, it'll get stuck. So definitely don't lose your DJI quick plate or leave it at home. I'm Android happy to see a gimbal app actually work not only for iOS, but also for us Android users. I use it to auto tune, control it remotely, and to change my user profiles. For someone who tests a lot of gimbals, I'm using a Sony and an Android as my mains. I couldn't make my lifestyle any much harder. <laughs> oh well, I like a challenge, what can I say? I also see a car mount feature in the app which might hint to a car rig in the future, knowing this thing could go up to 75 miles an hour. Eee, excitement. All right, what's in the box? Roll the clip. This case includes another case full of various cables, extra screws, which is awesome, and tools. The gimbal, handle, and tripod will have to be put together. A few tips, if this is your first gimbal, know that balancing is crucial. I did a full video on that and you could check it out here. Another tip for anyone new to the gimbal life, ninja walk it, which means bend your knees when you're walking with this thing. Even though it has really strong motors, if you don't bend your knees and you walk normal, you're gonna get this bounce in your footage and you don't want that. Trust. For those of you who are not used to heavier gimbals, this thing is 4.1 pounds or 1.85 kilograms without a camera. For these types of gimbals, I normally use them to use my 24 to 70 G Master with no problems. This gimbal is meant for heavy camera setups, which means you'll need the arms, back, and leg strength to do so. So check out my gimbal exercise video, which will help you if you plan on shooting for hours a day. I shot on it on and off for five hours and it wasn't too bad. Just have your second hand on the mini tripod grip and keep it close to your body. Now, if you're gonna be single-handed <laughs> vlogging with it out here, then <laughs> good luck. In conclusion, there's so many great things to say about this quality gimbal and you're getting the DJI name and support. It's so fresh that I can't wait to see what other accessories they have coming out with it like this add-on screen. Your production value is gonna skyrocket with this portable and affordable tool. I don't know how they nailed that price that they did. Thanks for hanging out with me. 
Like if you learned something and find me on IG because I post there on the daily. You do you fam and I'll see you when I see you. Mm, done. They both have good grips. Is that creepy? Also the mini the mini tripod, the mini tripod, even the mini mini tripod has a grip. And my mind blanked. Okay. Oh, scared the crap out of me. Airplanes. July 4th, Seth Arif. I love you.